are you hiding out? Are you at a place where you are depressed? You are faced with fear. You are faced with discouragement. You are hiding out in self-pity, in any form of anxiety. Today we'll be looking at how can we come out of this right here on Sitam Church Online Youth Cafe. My name is Linda Moniki. In the past couple of weeks, we've been looking at a man from scripture. His name is Elijah, such an astute, bold, courageous man who we find getting into the king's courtyard and telling him, prophesying two things. Number one, the God of Israel does exist and he reigns above every other thing. And number two, that there will not be rain in that place until he said so. This is a man who takes again the prophets of Baal and the Israelites to Mount Carmel to prove to them that indeed God exists and afterwards um, kills 400 prophets of Baal. At the same time again we see the hand of the Lord upon him in chapter um, 18 of First Kings chapter 19, First Kings chapter 18 and we see God's hand upon him and he's able to run before King Ahab you know and he's, he's basically a man who is standing out but later on, um, as you continue in scripture, in chapter 19 of 1 Kings, we find this man at a place where he was in despair, at a place where he was discouraged, at a place where he was living in self-pity. And we'll just pick this up from 1 Kings chapter 19 from verse 1 to 9. It says, And I have told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, I believe this is probably the first time we are seeing a truth or dare in scripture. So let the gods do to me, and more so also, if I do not take your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Verse 3, And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life, and went, and went to Bethsheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree and he prayed that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than, it, than my father's. Then he went and lay, slept, uh, slept under the broom and suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked and there was in his head was a cake baked of coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is great ahead of you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength that the food uh, for 40 days went, sorry, and went in the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave. And spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? I'd pose the same question and ask you, What are you doing here, Ivy? What are you doing here, Ian? What are you doing here, Andrew? What are you doing here, Zipporah? What are you doing there in the place of anxiety? Why are you in the place of fear? Why are you in the place of depression? Why are you in the place of discouragement? It's important for us to understand and it's very comforting to know that Elijah was a man who had feelings, he had emotions. So it was, it was okay for him to be in this place. It was okay for him to feel this way. But it was not okay for him to stay in that particular area, in that particular place. We are finding that in scripture, God is encouraging him and this, he sends an angel of the Lord. Basically, um, when you find in scripture where it would say an angel of the Lord appeared, it, it, he would appear in the form of Christ because Christ had not yet come onto earth. So it was an angel who, he was an angel who was sent by God in the form of Christ. But this angel in verse 5, as we read previously, would ask, tell him, arise and eat arise and eat and we find that Elijah arose he ate and immediately after he ate again he lay down and then the angel of the Lord appears to him and says arise and eat why because the journey is too great for you you could be watching this video and you're in this place you're in this place of depression you're in this place of fear you're in this place of discouragement but God is reminding us and God is letting us know that we need to arise and eat and just to bring this home, this food that he was, he was eating was not just physical food, 
But the Bible tells us that she was food that helped him to sojourn forward for his journey for 40 days and 40 nights. What is this eat? Eat basically, or this thing that he was eating, is in the likeness of the word of God today for us right now. That God is telling us, arise and eat his word. Arise and drink. Drink in scripture uh, figuratively or symbolically was symbolizing the spirit of God. It's symbolizing to us the presence of God. Water is the presence of God. And you find water, usually when you put water in a jug or you put water in a, in a glass, or you put water in a bowl or any other space, it fills up that place. In the same way, when you allow the Holy Spirit to get into our lives, when you invite the Holy Spirit into our hearts, into our situation, He fills up that void, He fills up that space, and He fills us with the presence of God. So today God is encouraging us and letting you know that you need to arise out of that place of depression. You need to arise, and not just arise, but eat, so that when you eat, when you feed on God's Word, it gives you the power, it gives you the strength. The Bible says that He went in the strength of that food. In the same way, God is saying that you will go in the strength of that word you'll go in the strength of his spirit in that situation that you're going through right now god is encouraging you and letting you know that the journey ahead of you is great that this is not the end guys i know 2020 may not have turned out the way we expected it to i know probably you have tried to sign in a contract here and there and self-pity came in you know and and um you're pitying yourself and you're telling yourself it worked out that contract worked, for, worked out for so and so um that business deal worked out for that person that um, uh, entry to that university or that school worked out for that person and didn't work out for me. You see, the most interesting thing about self-pity is that self-pity makes us think that um, when we know that Christ is indeed our light, we say to ourselves that I'm still in this darkness. Self-pity says that um, God is your strength and you are more than a conqueror. Uh, the word of God sorry, says that you are more than a conqueror and you can come out of that situation but self-pity says um, I'm still here, I'm still going through this, I can't be able to come out of this. It, it basically takes you to a place of not understanding that you are above, that God, through God's word you are above, you are more than a conqueror, you have strength. David says in Psalms 18 verse 1 that the Lord is his strength. You know, he says I love you O Lord my strength. So I pray that you'll find encouragement through this word, that you'll spend time in the presence of God and that they will, you'll feed on God's word and that God's word will give you the strength to move forward, to sojourn forward because there's a great journey ahead of you. Thank you so much for watching this video. We look forward to engaging with each and every one of you on our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, and also on Anchor at Sitam Church Online. If you'd like to engage with me personally, find me on Instagram, on Facebook, and Twitter using the handle Linda Shi Moniki. Thanks again. I'm praying for you guys, and I pray that the Lord shall continue to encourage you even during this season. God bless you.